Recall, acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So that means, to have acceleration, velocity must change. So, how do we change velocity? Well, we can increase our speed. If we push on the gas in a car, our speed can go from 10 kilometers per hour to 30 kilometers per hour. We see a change in velocity, and therefore, we have acceleration. Also, if we push on the brakes in the car, we might go from 100 kilometers per hour down to 80 kilometers per hour. This time, we see a negative change in velocity, but it's still a change. And thus, we'd say we have negative acceleration. So, there are two ways to change velocity. Are there any other ways to change velocity of an object? Well, to answer this, let's go back to our understanding of velocity. One thing we remember about velocity is that it's a vector quantity. That is, it has both magnitude and direction. So, to change an object's velocity, we have to change, well, either its magnitude or its direction. In our previous examples, we've been changing the magnitude of the velocity. That is the object's speed. By pushing the gas, the speed increased. By pushing the brake, the speed decreased. All of our acceleration problems to this point have focused on changes in speed, or the velocity's magnitude. Let's consider what happens if we change the velocity by changing its direction. It's still a change in velocity, so it must still be acceleration. For example, if you're driving around a curve in a road, even if you keep your speed at exactly 50 kilometers per hour, that is, the magnitude of the velocity stays the same, you are definitely accelerating. You feel yourself being pushed against the car door as you take the corner. We call this type of acceleration centripetal acceleration. An object moving in a circular path at a constant speed will experience centripetal acceleration. To review this, it's worth noting that there are a bunch of ideas here that are totally interconnected. Velocity has magnitude and direction. Acceleration requires a change in velocity. Acceleration can result from the change in speed, speeding up or slowing down, or Acceleration can result from a change in direction, the other part of velocity. Acceleration, due to taking a circular path at the same speed, is called centripetal acceleration. We can also recall that Newton's first law explains that a force is needed to accelerate. Otherwise, an object just keeps moving along with the same velocity. Thus, a force is needed to speed things up or slow things down. Also, a force is required to cause an object to change direction. We'll get more into the forces involved in circular motion here, but at this point I just wanted you to start relating some of your previous concepts to this new concept of centripetal acceleration.